Hey everyone, today I want to give you a guide on how to play Adele well in 2023. So let's get right on into some skills here for your fifth job matrix. Your trinodes are Hunting Decree, Cleave, Reign of Destruction for one of your trios. Your other trio is Ether Forge, Magic Dispatch, Ether Bloom. Uh, get those maxed out when you can. Infinity Blade is a three minute bursting skill. It makes you invincible when you use it and when it is falling off, it's really nice. It Ruin is just a great DPS skill. Every 60 seconds you should be using that. Storm is a great mini burst skill every 90 seconds and it does more damage when you have more swords at with Hunting Decree, which we'll talk about in a bit. Legacy Restoration, Grandest Goddess, Conversion Overdrive, Weapon Aura. These are all three minute burst buffs. They're all very good. Uh, True Enact and Reflection, Solar Crest, Will Skill, Saren Skill. Use those on your three minute burst whenever they're up. Uh, because their cooldown is not three minutes exactly, it's four minutes and change. You'll probably use this every other burst. Blink for safety. Impenetrable Skin for knockback immunity. Really, really good. Fatal Strike 1 is your special node that you will use most of the time, which increases your damage by 100% for 2 seconds. Typically more than that, because the uh, it, it falling off is affected by server lag, and that does trigger every 30 seconds, which is really nice. Everything else is standard. Uh, combat orders, speed infusion, so you can break attack speed cap with a Monster Park Green Potion. And Decent Advanced Blessing for a little extra attack. Obviously Sharp Eyes uh, is better than Decent Advanced Blessing if you've got the space for it. I have it on my glove, so I don't have this decent node up right now. Uh, a second will, uh, hero's will is always good to take in certain bossing scenarios like Gloom or Black Mage, and otherwise that's that. Uh, rope Lift if you've got room for the extra 30 stat that it gives on a plus 5 slot. Uh, another special node that you could use in certain bosses like Vihila or Black Mage or some other bosses where you're not comfortable with your HP level all the time. Uh, auto Recovery 2. It fully recovers your HP every 30 seconds when you're using a skill. That's really, really nice. Now, Adele's base stats make it so you need to have some additional source of crit rate somewhere. So I have a line of crit rate on my weapon. It's in my bonus pot. It's 10%. Otherwise, you'll need to take an extra link skill for crit rate aside from Phantom and Beast Tamer. So you could even put uh, 10 points into your hyper stat. Uh, it, it's kind of just up to you where you get that extra crit rate to get to 100%. Adele's base is just a little bit low. So I've got two link skill setups that I usually take these days. I've got a full DPS and I've got a safety setup. The full DPS setup, I've got Mage Link, Beast Tamer, Demon Slayer, Xenon, Kinesis, Luminous, Phantom, Arc, Angelic Buster for mini burst and burst. The terms and conditions is really good. Tide of Battle is Iliums. Unfair Advantage is Kadena. Wild Rage is Demon Avenger. Most of these are passive damage increases. Uh, Tide of Battle, you do have to move around a little bit or jump a little bit to keep the stacks up, but most bosses are usually dodging stuff, so uh, Tide of Battle stacks are usually kept up here. So all of these are great. Uh, Phantom and uh, Beast Tamer for the extra crit rate to make sure you're at 100% here. The safety setup is the same exact thing, but I switch off Xenon and I switch off Angelic Buster and I put on Warrior Link skill, which when your HP falls really, really low, it restores your HP. Every three and a half minutes, you'll have that safety net. And Spirit of Freedom, if you have four resistance characters to at least level 120, you get eight seconds of invincibility when you're revived in a bossing scenario. Really, really great safety skill. Uh, depending on my comfort level with bosses, I'll take one or the other. Uh, hyper skills, you have trigger, reinforce, uh, your cleave, which is your main uh, DPSing skill off burst, is a trigger skill. Uh, boss rush on that as well for the extra boss damage. Reign of destruction duration is awesome. Just having reign of destruction, which already does a ton of damage, last even longer is really, really good. Ether Bloom cooldown, minus 25%, is a great DPS increase. It also helps it time more uh, easily with Noble Summons. There's a combo we'll talk about in a little bit. True Nobility, uh, I take this point here because when you have shield HP, 
you get extra damage. It isn't just for using true nobility. You have to have shield HP. So situational, but I enjoy having the extra damage when I'm bursting, or if I just use it for safety, you know, the 15% damage isn't something I'm going to really feel. So uh, that's your hypers. Now, uh, inner ability. Uh, cooldown skip is great. Cooldown skip affects many, many things. It affects feather float, which is a backstab step blink skill which we'll talk a little bit more about later it affects magic dispatch it affects angelic buster if you're using angelic busters link skill and getting resets on this is fantastic uh it affects floor and hero's will so you can get resets on your five minute cleansing skill which is really good it affects reign of destruction so just getting extra reigns of destruction out is really good it also affects plummet so uh, sometimes you might want that, most of the time you don't need it on Plummet, but it's just nice to note either which way. Uh, and that, I believe, is everything that is affected by cooldown skip. So, I really enjoy it, having it on my inner ability. It feels really, really good. Now we're going to talk about a couple of combos that Adele has. You have Impale plus Resonance Rush. Here's what it looks like. Impale puts an Aether Crystal out where the particle ends. Resonance Rush dashes you towards that crystal and also does damage to whatever you're dashing through. Why do you want to use Resonance Rush on crystals? Because when you do that, you get a buff that stacks up to two times that gives you 5% final damage and 5% ignore enemy defense. This lasts around 40-ish seconds, so it's really, really good. Uh, you can stack that up to two times, so there's one way to get your stacks of Resonance Rush up. The other way you do that is when your swords are attacking something, crystals periodically appear. You can use your Hyper Skill Shard Breaker that makes a ton of crystals appear, although you'll probably just be using that off cooldown for damage. Uh, you don't really need to use Resonance Rush every single time you see a crystal. It's really just to keep your stacks up or to move around the map quickly because you can impale in a diagonally upward direction and then you can put a crystal up there if you want to get some vertical momentum going in a boss scenario or something like that. Now another combo you have is having some swords out here. You can use Magic Dispatch and you can use Noble Summons at nearly the same time. So if I do that really quick, that's what it looks like. Magic Dispatch makes those missiles shoot out and home into an enemy. Noble Summons brings all the swords back to you. So if I combo that with now Aether Bloom, I use uh, Magic Dispatch, Noble Summons at the same time, and then Aether Bloom followed up. There's a, there's a pretty standard combo for Adele right there, is bringing all your swords to you and using Aether Bloom to make them twirl and do a lot of damage all on one spot. Now, this does require you to be on top of the boss, so make sure you're chasing the boss and standing on top of it when, when possible. Magic Dispatch does have a little bit of range, so you can use it if you're trying to just attack at max range. So just in case you need to be safe, you don't need to stand on the boss, uh, but it's more damage obviously if you're standing on the boss. Now of course, in order to summon swords with Hunting Decree here, you do need to have Aether Forge active and you do need to have Aether Meter here. So every 100 meter that you get, which goes up every time that you're attacking here, uh, you'll get a sword that you can summon, which turns into two swords really when you use Hunting Decree. You can have up to six out standardly, or if you use Legacy Restoration, which we'll talk about later for your burst, you can have eight. And these swords last a set amount of time, 40 seconds, so you don't have to really keep these, keep smashing the button if you don't want, but I usually have Cleave, which is the standard attacking skill off first, right next to Hunting Decree, just so I can not only fill up the meter constantly, but keep using the meter in a very comfortable position on the keyboard. So let's turn all those guys off for now. That's your combos on Adele. Uh, let's talk a little bit about safety. So. High Rise is a first job skill. You can right click it to command lock it, or you can just have it standard. Uh, you can put this on your keyboard, or you can double tap the up arrow key in mid air. It lets you hover for a couple of seconds, 
It's really, really useful if you need to freeze your aerial position. Imagine if you're in something like Lucid and you want to just weave in between some flowers in phase one or Will sends out his floor spider in phase two. You can just keep attacking while it goes underneath you. Uh, you can avoid guardian angel slimes when the KO jump. Uh, you can continue DPSing during Gloom's laser if you up jump and use high rise midair. Uh, and if you don't want to up t uh, double tap the up arrow key, you can always hot key it. I just personally find it more comfortable to just double tap it. Feather Float is a blink backwards that makes you airborne if you are currently grounded. And what's nice about that is you can flash jump up or forward out of that if you are currently uh, grounded or have not used your uh, flash jump yet. So if I even use this mid air, I can still do the flash jump. So Feather Float is really, really nice. You can use it to avoid Lotus's laser in P1. You can use it to avoid Will's tornado in P1. You can uh, use it in various situations where you just need to like, oh shit, I'm too close to the boss. Uh, now, you need to be wary of Lucid's P1 golems because it does count as a teleport effect, and going through Lucid's golems like that will do a ton of damage to you, but it can be good in a pinch. Uh, Aether Guard is what used to be an iframe is now a guard, so if you just hold the skill down, it's a damage reduction, and you can hold the skill down for a very long time. And for every second that you don't have it held down, the cooldown does get reduced. So this can be very, very handy uh, for just, hey, I'm standing on top of Lucid. She's using her uh, scythes in phase two or phase one. I just can, am gonna hold this down to damage reduce and survive. Now you can also perfect guard. Now, what that means is if you use this skill within like a quarter to a half a second before something hits you, you will nullify the damage completely and you'll get an even bigger amount of damage reduction by holding the skill down. So uh, using this skill and getting used to the perfect timing is uh, very, very nice and you should definitely keep practicing trying to get perfect guards off but holding the skill down just for damage reduction if you don't have the muscle memory or the timing for it yet is totally valid because you'll still live a lot of the time from just using it. Uh, True Nobility is a big shield. You do get a lot of shield HP from this. So uh, there is that hyper skill I talked about when you have shield HP it increases your damage. This is that skill. Uh, this is 20 seconds of survivability every three minutes. It's really, really nice. If you are in a party, you do take damage from some of your party members, so it can be a little weird getting used to it. But for the most part, this is an excellent uh, damage safety skill for you to just be like, I'm bursting, I want to just be safe during it, or like if you're in a tight spot in Lotus or Will, Phase 2, Phase 3, Vihilla, you know, situations where there's a lot of trash falling from the sky or if there's just a limited amount of healing, this can save you quite often. Uh, True Nobility actually does get reset with cooldown skip, I forgot to mention. So please forgive me earlier for that mistake. Uh, and when this resets, it also feels really, really good because you're just invincible pretty much. The shield HP generated is quite nice when you get hit. Uh, Plummet is a skill that lets you stop your horizontal momentum immediately. So imagine you get knocked back by V-Hilla. You can just plummet and not get hit by a string perfectly. Uh, also, uh, you can, like, if you're keeping your resonance rush stacks up, doing it upwards, you can use it to get back down to the floor very quickly. Impenetrable Skin is really great. I use it in Lotus and Vihila for their super knockbacks when they are not bound. I uh, usually don't use it until they are unbound after I'm bursting, or if Lotus is using like the floor lasers, I'll use it if I don't feel too safe, just so I don't get knocked off the platforms that fall down. Uh, Legacy Restoration, this is often overlooked, but it does restore 10.5% max HP to you and your party members every time it ticks, um, which likely won't save anyone's life, but it's nice a little bit of extra nice safety during your three minute burst 
you will not use this for the HP effect. You will always use this for your three minute burst. Um, just a little bit of uh, HP restoration that most people probably overlook. Uh, Blink is really, really good. It lets you just go to a random location on the map. If you're in a very, very dire strait, you can use that as a last resort just to sort of get out of a bad situation if you're against a wall or something like that. If you use it mid-air, you can kind of combo it with Adele's already built-in high rise. So there's high rise. I'm holding the blink skill down. Blink activated, and you can move around but not attack while blink is activated. You can use that to avoid uh, Lucid's dragon in phase one. You can use that to float over the floor lasers and lotus on phase two and phase three. Black mages rolling meteors on the floor. Just any floor attack really uh, is blink is really really handy for uh, just getting out of. Uh, Floor and Heroes Will uh, is really good to cleanse, you know, status debuffs like in Gloom or Dark Nell's la uh, lasers, meteors. Uh, you can also use it preemptively for status avoidance, like if you're in uh, currently in Darkness and Gloom, which they are fixing. There are no meteors in Gloom in, in a couple patches or something like that. Uh, but for now, you can use it, and you can hover, and you won't get stunned by an orb and die in gloom. You can also use it in Black Mage preemptively, because when you use it, you're immune to all status effects for three seconds, so you won't get a black or a white curse. You saw me get a reset earlier. It's really nice when that resets with the skill skip inner. And that's about it for safety. And getting used to all of that takes some time but it's really handy to have all of these tools in your kit. So now DPSing off burst, you're gonna be spamming cleave. You're gonna have six swords out. You're gonna wanna try to keep six swords out because they do a lot of damage. And you're going to use your ruin, which is a 60 second cooldown. Your guard breaker, which is a 60 second cooldown. You're gonna want to use reign of destruction whenever it's up. It's up every 30 seconds. And whenever you think to do it, just refresh your Resonance Rush stacks every 40 seconds up to 2. So when the fight begins, get up to 2. And when the uh, timer gets down to 40 seconds, down to like 5 seconds or so, make sure you're refreshing it just to keep that final damage and ignore defense up. And otherwise, you'll be using the Magic Dispatch, Noble Summons, Aether Bloom combo whenever that's available, which is about every 11 to 12 seconds if you have a two second cooldown hat like I do. It might be a little bit less time for you if you have a better cooldown hat than I do. So that's kind of your off burst DPS that you'll be doing. Now, for uh, when you're bursting, either a mini burst or a three minute burst, you're going to want to make sure that you have Crave Proclamation on the enemy. So, Grave Proclamation applies a debuff to an enemy that increases your damage to that enemy and ignores more defense on that enemy. You only need to use this once. The debuff does not fall off unless you die or unless you press the skill again like I did just there while it's still on cooldown. The disabling it while it's on cooldown is a very weird choice. I don't know why Nexon did that. Nexon did it because they're Nexon. So just make sure that you have this debuff here. It looks like that on the enemy, it gives you increased damage. Uh, you don't ever need to push this button again uh, unless you die. So, or accidentally turn it off. So, make sure you have that debuff on. Try to have six swords out before you start bursting. And then also try to have two stacks of resonance rush before you start bursting. So that's your pre-burst setup. Now for your 90 second mini burst, you're going to use Angelic Buster if you've got it. You're going to use Reign of Destruction. You're going to use Storm while you have six swords out because it does more damage the more swords you have out. You're going to use your Magic Dispatch, Noble Sun, and Ethan as a combo. Ruin and Shard Breaker if you have them up, they are 60 second cooldown so they might not align with the 90 second burst. And otherwise you just use your magic dispatch combo whenever it's available and you keep using fleet. So that is your 90 second mini burst. Now your three minute burst is a little bit more involved but it's very similar to mini burst. There's just a few more buttons to push. 
you're going to want to buff up first, so Weapon Aura, Conversion Overdrive, Divine Wrath, Legacy Restoration, Grandest Goddess's Blessing. Now, if you have Angelic Buster, you'll use that here. If you have an Oz Ring, you'll use that here. Uh, depending on your comfort level in the boss, you will also pop True Nobility. And now that you have Legacy Restoration on, you'll want to get an 8th Sword out since it increases the cap of your swords. Why do you want to do that to get 8th Swords out? Obviously, with Hunting Decree, that does more damage, but Storm will also do more damage because it does more damage the more swords you have out. So uh, you want to make sure you have all of that prepared before you start using all of your skills here. I'm just waiting for Storm to come back and Angelic Buster to come back before I do the full rotation. Essentially, after we buff up, we're going to be Binding, which is Blade Torrent. We're going to pop Infinity, which is a 30 second long DPSing skill. We're going to use Storm, which lasts for 14 seconds. We're going to use Reign of Destruction, which lasts for 7 or 11 seconds if you've got that hyper skill. And then we're going to pop everything else that's instantaneous damage now that we have all of our damage over time going. So we're going to use Ruin if we've got it up. We're going to use Shardbreaker if we've got it up. We're going to use Will Skill and Saren Skill, which really you could use these earlier, but I always use them after I use most of the rest of my Adele skills because they are... You know, they do damage, but they're not like a huge amount of final damage percent. Magic Dispatch, Noble Summons, Aether Bloom combo when you've got it available. Otherwise, just keep on cleaving. So let's see what that all looks like when we put it all together. So we're buffing up. One, two, three, four, five. Angelic Buster. True Nobility Shield. Make sure we have our eight swords out. We're going to use Bind. We're going to use Infinity. We're going to get Rain of Destruction out, Storm, Ruin, Shardbreaker, Combo, Real Skill, Saren Skill. And if you didn't already have your stacks up for Resonance Rush, make sure you get them out. They will last for your whole burst. And otherwise, you just keep away. Combo came up, so we'll use it again here. Uh, this combo does get a little bit of Magic Dispatch. Uh, Noble Sun and Ichigo combo gets a little bit stronger whenever you have eight, eight swords out versus the six, so it's good to use that. Uh, Reign of Destruction comes up in 30 or less seconds, depending on your cooldown reduction situation, so you'll get that off again while some of your buffs are still going here, because these buffs do last quite a few seconds. And that's how you burst on an elf. Uh, of course, you can't just stand on top of a boss all the time. You might have to, you know... Back, back step the feather float, you might have to guard something with your ether guard, you might have to jump around a little bit, you might have to, you know, stop your mobility midair with some kind of skill. So, uh, just make sure that you're being safe when you're, uh, bursting, because if you die during burst, it just feels bad. You have to revive real quick and get back over there. Now, uh, I always play with my character's skill transparency to as low as humanly possible, and I have other characters set to as low as humanly possible. This is because, like you just saw, it's like impossible to see anything that the boss is doing while you have all that out. And it's still a little bit hard with what Adele's got going on to see the boss behind all the skill effects when you're doing your three minute burst. Mini burst is not so bad, but it's not too, too bad uh, with that reduced all the way down. I wish there was a way to make it go down even further, but alas, this is where we are at. Uh, now, definitely remember, make sure you have speed infusion and an extreme green pot going so you can break the attack speed barrier and get bonus attack speed. And otherwise, yeah, use your standard buffs, whatever you got, your guild skills, your echo, and hopefully this helps you learn how to Adele in a bossing scenario. Uh, there are a lot of buttons to push, and you do have that resource meter that you need to make sure you keep using Cleave with to get more ether on to do the damage and get the swords out, of course. Um, but I find this class quite fun. It's a nice active combat style. You have, you have options. I like to have options. And that's that. Uh, if I forgot something, or if you have any tips for Adele that I did not discuss in this video, please let everybody know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.